Hi guys, welcome to another Kemikaze creation video. A lot to talk about today in the uh, decisions and changes and uh, cost <laughs> of a few of those decisions on the uh, little UC Tirana there and getting this uh, new engine happening. Uh, the 202 build, which you've been looking at and uh, following. And uh, you saw from when I pulled that uh, head off and lifted those lifters out, that uh, had a little bit of wear, <laughs> I'd say a lot of wear, on, the, um, on one of those lifters. And it was only one of them. Uh, but from uh, perusing the Facebook uh, sites with engine building, uh, I'm seeing this as a commonality and uh, happening a lot. Uh, been talking to a fair few people. And I was talking to an engine builder. He works in the ag industry, uh, builds engines on a daily basis, and he's seen cams uh, go from like ten thousand hours down to a thousand hours uh, uh, that are marked up as manufacturer. Uh, style cams um, and I think they're coming out of some of the cheaper manufacturing nations uh, but there's something going on with the metal in some of these parts so anyway one of the decisions I've made from that process is uh, going to a roller cam now I'm using a gentleman and, and shout out to Ray um, on the uh, 202 sites uh, has befriended me and sends me a fair few messages and suggestions and uh, Ray put me on to a couple of people but one of them was Phil down at Shore Cams which is down at Port Macquarie which is uh, uh, quite ironic because uh, that's where my uh, my mum still lives down near Port Macquarie and uh, he has a business there Ray's um, getting uh, long in the years uh, a little bit longer than me um, so very happy that he's still in the game and in talking to him, he's going to build me a good roller cam for this engine. Uh, we're talking reasonably low revving. I want a high torque engine, but I'm, I don't want to rev the guts out of it. And he's going to design a cam to give me uh, those requirements. And we're talking about, you know, maxing out at around five and a half thousand rev for the max horsepower. Uh, the big thing with a roller cam is it gives you much more, uh, I think it's called duration on the lobes, so that basically the valves stay open for longer. They allow more gases out, allow more air in, and give it a much, uh, much better flow rate, up to 30% better flow rate. So that is a bonus. You know, I've gone for it for the purpose of uh, reduce friction so I don't uh, wear out another set of lifters uh, but it seems like I'm going to get a few more benefits from that. I'll also link in uh, a few pictures as well. I've bought the, uh, the lifters out of um, Performance Warehouse in Brisbane so they're a roller lifter to match up with the roller cam. They're a link bar lifter and I did have a few questions from people about the um, about the uh, link bar and why it was there, and I wasn't sure. The link bar basically stops the uh, the lifter from rotating. With the, the standard lifters, flat tappets, they rotate in the lifter hole, uh, and that's fine. But with the roller lifters, they've actually got a roller, so the lifter cannot rotate. It has to stay stationary, and that's why they put that link bar on. So I've got to modify the block, um, and I'll show you a part of what I've got to do there. So knock the lugs off that the side plates hold uh, into um, to allow for those link bars. And uh, I'll probably run a stud or a longer uh, bolt in to put those side plates back on. So that's one thing. That's a roller cam through Shaw Cams and Phil's the man's name. He's <laughs> flat out and he probably won't appreciate me uh, sharing his business because I think he wants to retire. But uh, I'm really stoked with that. The lifters out of Performance Warehouse in, uh, in uh, Slacks Creek up there, uh, the Gold Coast heading towards the Brisbane. The other thing I've done, I saw a post the other day, and it's, I think it's Swan Performance, but again, I'll put some links in here, 
to a billet aluminium um, uh, timing cover that actually has a support bearing in there uh, for the extra load that the blower's uh, putting on on the crank. And, uh, and with that, I have to run an ATI um, balancer. Now, the, um, I'm running the standard uh, V-belt pulley, uh, and I'm running a trigger wheel, and I'll have a look in the engine bay, I'll show you this at the moment, and I'm running the serpentine um, pulley for the blower. So we're talking at the moment on setting something up, a one-stop shop with the ATI uh, pulley, to cover all of those bases and it might save me a little bit of room in the um, in the space in front of the radiator because it's reasonably congested and it's going to tidy it up a hell of a lot. Like the billet aluminium cover is, it's a work of art what he's designed. I saw these uh, probably 18 months ago on Facebook uh, and he only does them in small runs. Uh, and I wanted to get one then and I didn't and I forgot all about it and then they popped up the other day and I was, I'm still at that stage in my build where I keep putting the builder off with all these new ideas. Uh, but he's been pretty cool with that. And every time I go down to him with an idea, he says, that's a great idea, that's a great idea. So, you know, from looking out there, looking at what other people are doing, listening to good people out there, and thank you, Ray, for all of your suggestions, um, starting to build a pretty strong motor, very expensive motor for a six-cylinder, but uh, that seems to be the go, and they, they've become... Uh, a pretty, um, uh, a, a pretty, uh, what do they call it? The bespoke is the is the current word for today. But a pretty bespoke motor. Instead of putting a, an LS1 in there, which is you know just cut and shut, put it straight in. Uh, even a 308 or 253, pretty basic. Building one of these six cylinders that go hard is a work of art, and there's a lot of technology involved. Anyway, I'll show you inside the engine bay at that pulley setup that I'm going to change. So it's a little bit hard to see, and you can see how congested it is down here in the uh, engine bay. But you can see the tooth belt just to the left, or the, the tooth wheel, the trigger wheel, which runs off that uh, little trigger sensor down there. You can obviously see my, um, my standard V-belt, which is in the same alignment as it is on the standard 202. And you can see the uh, serpentine pulley there, which runs up to the blower. Now, the blower is positioned in a position, bolts to uh, the inlet manifold. Uh, and I may have to look at some of these sizes and measurements off the uh, front of the block to match up with uh, Swanee's timing cover and get these pulleys to all work. I'll just show you the blower and how it's positioned. So here's the blower, and as you can see, this is uh, you know Shane Barnett's design and configuration. I might be able to talk to Shane about some of the modifications I may need to make. And the big thing is getting this alignment down to that uh, serpentine pulley down the bottom. Uh, I may be able to make some adjustments on the pulley itself if it's, uh, if it's not too major and the position that sits in but I may also have to modify the shaft and the snout area here to get that all to line up. Or hopefully, uh, if I get all the right measurements, uh, Swanee can um, make it all work for me on the uh, ATI pulley setup because he's going to get that made up for me to my configuration. So they're the big concerns, getting those uh, every time you make a change. You've got to change everything else, uh, but hopefully all of these design changes I'm making will make this just a bulletproof engine with uh, really good performance statistics. Uh, so I'm looking forward to that heaps. So you can see down here, I've still got this set up where I had it before, and you can see down here the lugs that uh, the, the side cover bolts onto. So those lugs interfere with the link bar on uh, the uh, roller lifters. So I'm gonna have to machine those off on the 202 block, which is now the engine machinist. So he's right with that and ready to go. And I think the actual link bar may need some modifications as well so it can, uh, 
miss whatever stud or whatever fastening arrangement I've got on uh, on that side plate. So guys, that's where I'm up to at the moment. I just thought I'd give you an update on all of the changes and modifications and parts since I pulled that apart. And the last phase I was at uh, when I talked to you was basically pulling those, uh, I was pulling the head off so I could take it down and get it CC'd to get the compression ratio right. From pulling that head off, I found those worn uh, uh, lifters which is a bit of a shocker. And my engine builder said that, uh, you know, not only have you got the problem of the worn lifter, the cam's probably buggered, but not only that, that metal that's worn off there, very fine as it is, has gone right through everything. It's, it's in the barrels, it's in the bearings. Uh, so pretty much that bottom end uh, needs a fairly good clean up, maybe some new bearings. Uh, you know, it's still usable but it's definitely had a few issues uh, with that metal running through there. Uh, so uh, that's one of the reasons I've gone for that roller cam. Uh, and that has given me some performance uh, benefits as well. So that's gonna be absolutely awesome. I'll link you in uh, with some descriptions down below in the comments. I'll put, uh, I don't know whether I can put web addresses in. Sometimes she gets a bit, uh, bit angry at me putting web addresses in, but I'll uh, definitely link you into all the different sites I've used for all the different parts and uh, give you some part numbers and things of the things I built. So a bit happening in the shed. Um, we're in the winter season, so I'm not working too hard at my business, uh, but I am uh, uh, planning a few things out and hopefully I can get a bit of progress on this motor very soon. Uh, it's going to be a few weeks. Uh, the cam may be only about a week away. I'm not sure how far away that new cover because I only just paid for it this week. Uh, billet aluminium timing cover. Um, and then I've got the AKI um, harmonic balancer, trigger, all of that gear to fit in. So anyway, guys, bit of an update. Hope that's good for you. Take care. And I'll talk to you as I make more progress. See you.